Hi, I'm John DiArmo with the Coquille Valley Sword Group. And I'm Edward. Today we're going over the application of Amashi Uchi. So we'll start off by demonstrating the kata once and then going through its important biddles. As always, I am Uchidachi, Edward is Shidachi. Good. Straightforward, simple. The beginning is like so many of our kata. Nothing special, nothing special, nothing special, right? Here's where it happens, right? It's in this, where we go from this sort of relaxed position to where we start baiting him in, right? Now, just like um, uh, Mojiri, right? You're, you're, you're not trying to be like, right? And show them that you've got some sneaky ninja plan. You want to mix it, right? And you're just, you're just offering that. As you get excited, as you get excited, you make them think that you're losing your uh, balance and uh, really make that a much closer, easier target for them to start going for, right? Because that's what this Amashi idea is all about. It's all about that invitation, the, uh, the pawn sacrifice, right? They make that cut, and you take them, right? Boom. Uh, there are lots and lots of ways to go about this, um, but we'll show that sacrifice idea more when we get away from the swords and start looking at other applications. But right now, I want you guys to start thinking about how uh, our body interacts with this decision to sacrifice and move hand, right? In the kata, in the pause version, there is a step clear, you come to a nice comfy position, you know, it's very, uh, uh, refined. Gentlemanly. It is. It is, it is very uh, gentlemanly. Right? In the no pause version, it is uh, much more accurate to the spirit of it. But in both of these, we've got to kind of get our body into a position where we can use it. Because obviously, if I just clear this out, boop, he follows right away with a thrust. He's going to take me anyway, right? To the body or the face, doesn't matter. So I still have to follow this fundamental rule of moving my body out of the way, whether I'm doing it from one hasso to another hasso, real just straight up and down, or whether I'm just slipping in here real close, you know, in this space of the sword, as opposed to off in this space of the sword, right? Now, as you should know by now, having watched all the Tachi Seho and hopefully practiced them. Uh, in Hyoho, our evasions uh, are quite close. We, we prefer this closeness, not because we're trying to uh, sneak past them necessarily. In other words, when Eddie cuts at me, I'm not trying to like, right, is just get in here close to him like that. What I'm trying to do is one, not alert him to the idea that he's not gonna hit me. Two, hit him in the most direct time possible in that absolute moment, right? Boop. Right right when he hits me, boop, I hit him. Or rather, when he thinks he should have hit me, boop, is when he gets hit. Because that's the point where he's at his weakness. Weakest. Weakest. <laughs> weakest. Weakness, that's the point where he's at his weakest. We, we, we're <laughs> so, with this work, with this body work, there are lots of ways to go about this. If they're coming in uh, 
with kind of a, a strong step, right? They're really pushing you. It might uh, work better to pull off footwork like from Torobori, right? To move the foot forward and to move the other foot back. Um, for a committed attacker, this is what I tend to use in sparring, right? If the person is either reticent or uh, they're, they're treating it like a game of tag with uh, bamboo swords, like he, 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 tries like, I wanna win, I wanna win, right? Then it's better to get that step in, right? Because as they're starting to retreat, you still take them, right? So it's just, uh, it's another place that you can practice those tools of adjusting with your partner's dimension. Um, in many styles of martial art, there is a, a popularized idea that you should have a technical answer for problems. So if Eddie cuts at me, my technical answer should be uke nagashi, right? And so whenever he cuts at me, my answer should be, uke nagashi, right? But of course, this, uh, this falls apart once people are free to behave how they want, right? And suddenly his, his cut becomes more dynamic and my, my uke nagashi just crumbles into nothing, right? Uh, with, with combative arts, really combative, not just I'm in adult daycare with really comfy PJs and bright shiny belts. They are comfy PJs. Um, but in, in combative arts, right, we realize that this dude over here, he's just chaos. He's chaos and craziness. We got no idea what's going on with him, right? And so we have to be the stabilizing influence, right? Not that we're like exerting our stabilizing influence brainwaves at him, but that uh, if we think of this as like a universal equation of balance and harmony, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going full woo-woo, right? If my opponent is just, and I have no idea what's going on, then I have to be that, that stable sort of, right? Right? To where I have my posture, I have my position, I have my cut, everything I do in my body is controlled and everything I do to my opponent gathers and controls him, right? It, uh, it's like when you want to give a cat a bath, right? When they don't like water, what do you do? You take a cover or a pillowcase or a towel, you put it over, go whoop, and you just wrap that sucker up, right? Same thing is happening here, right? You just wrap that sucker up, you have him under control, and you uh, uh, resolve the interaction uh, as is appropriate, right? So, moving with your body is of course a huge part of that, but don't feel, don't feel married to the kata stepping. Don't think that like, okay, well if when I cut, if I'm not in a perfect koshimi hanmi, right, then I'm not doing kyoho. You know, I'm doing some other whatever made up sword, right? Don't feel like that, right? Because that's not reality, right? <laughs> reality is you adapt to their work. Now, does that mean, you know, we just, oh, well we just, why do we learn that if we're never gonna use it? It's not that you're never gonna use it. It's that we are showing you how to interact in this one example in a way that provides benefit to you, in a way that may seem uh, uncommon. Because if it was super common, we wouldn't have to show it to you, right? right? And if this is something that like, maybe you are either part of a style that is very rigid, or uh, you, you've been indoctrinated with uh, this sort of like internet zeitgeist 
that like, oh, Koryu is one way every time, always, right? And if you've deviated, that's not Koryu, right? Go on YouTube and pick, you know, five or six Yoho videos, right? Uh, look for ones that are, are done by Hombu, the, the group in Japan, like the main section. And you will see their work done differently in every single one of them, right? And now you can, you can say, oh, well, this was Imbu, and that was a private viewee, and so there's, that's the, and that's, it's apologist, right? That, that's not real, right? What's real is that Koryu changes. Koryu changes and evolves because fighting changes and evolves. I've got to adapt to my situation. The first kata yeah. is a great example. Yeah, Sasen, right? So we all know the Sasen we do now, right? Unless you're in the, um, uh, Yamatoha, right? In which case their, uh, their, their, their Koshi Mihani is different, right? Or if you're doing uh, Traditional. the older method, or, you know, it, it goes on and changes on and on and on and on between the various branches, between the various years, between who is Soke and, you know, what they bring, I mean, if you look at Imai's work next to Kajia's, like, they're, they're doing the same katas, kind of, for sure. But they look completely different in all of the tiny minutia that people think that Koryu's about. Because they, I mean, it's, it's normal, right? Because Koryu's like this secret knowledge. And so we imagine that, well, if it's secret, the secret must be in, like, the subtle details. It's like, sounds... oh, my wrist is at a 45 degree angle, and that's what lets me do my ninja bullshit. And that's not the case, right? It is... Get the thing out of the way. Okay. I, it's not the case for Hyoho, right? Maybe in, in later era styles that are more focused on sort of one-on-one -on -one dueling, right? Where techniques become more important because you're just having a technical confrontation with a dude, then maybe that minutia becomes the secret key. But for older work like ours, it's, that's just not the way it is, right? The secret, which isn't a secret at all, is just teaching people to adapt to their situation and to think in a way that's gonna let them survive, right? To move from uh, this kind of fencing, right? Where I'm being led around by my own insecurity to fencing where it's like, okay, right? And you just work the dude, right? Where you just come in, it's like, I'm doing it. Doesn't matter where your sword is, right? Bah. Boop. And you work the dude, right? You just get it done, right? It doesn't mean I'm just like, no! <laughs> and just like get frisky. running at him with no, uh, with no, with no method, right? It's, uh, it's so much, else? yeah, it's so, it's so much more, psychological than a little technical, right? Uh, it's not to say we don't have technical work. It's saying that... I'm on the wrong side. I don't like this. Oh, okay. That's fine. That's fine. All right. Maybe you should adapt to your... Uh... <laughs> okay. Uh, we're, we're getting a little long-winded with this. So, let's uh, cut it there. Think about it, right? We're not talking to hear ourselves talk. Think about the work deeply and swing the damn sword with your partner if you want to understand it, right? Otherwise, it's just cosplay. It's I'm, I'm, I'm tying my hakama, I got my keigo gi, I can, Nyo! Nyo! right? And you can, you, can, you can do your stuff and you can feel good about that and that's fine, right? But if what you're going for is to understand this concept, this, this thing that Musashi spent his whole life on, then you gotta, you gotta approach it like he did, right? You gotta, you gotta hunt ruthlessly for that uh, essence, right? Anyway. So, let's go ahead and show this work with Fukuroshi and I. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Pick your poison. There's, oh, you can take the thicky. 
right? So for this, Eddie's going to feed attacks um, just because it's convenient, right? Right. Right. So Kisaki Gaishi, boom, just like in Mojiri Gamai, but applied with that same strategy, right? Right? Toroburi, same thing. Be like, hey there, how's it going? And you get how's really it? close in. Just... Yeah, yeah. Well, you want to, right? You want to, you want to take him. You want to. So you get the idea, right? It's it, it's all about like, what can I give the guy? What makes him think that he can hit me? So right? he gains enough confidence. Yeah, so that he comes in and gets the job done where you want, right? Because if I just stand here. The world is his oyster. It is an open field. He's just as likely to hit it my head as he is to my shoulders or arms or try and kiriage up into me. It's everything, right? I start putting mate out for him. And now he can go basically one of two ways. He'll come from over top, he'll come from underneath, right? I've taken all of that multitude of options that he has and without doing anything to him, without saying anything to him, without using psychic mind waves to him or whatever, I've made him choose one of two options, right? Down. Now, does that mean he'll ch always choose that? No, of course. Of course, I can be out here and he can decide I'm not going to do any of this and he's going to whoop, try and do something else. But it doesn't matter because it is not so much to restrict your enemy's movement, movement as it is to focus your own mind on the task at hand. Because when your mind is um, uh, jumbled with what's going on, like, oh shit, oh shit, where's he coming? Where's he coming? Right? And you have to start thinking, he's gonna be here, he's gonna be there, he's gonna be here, he's gonna be here. If he's here, I'm gonna respond to this. If he's here, I'm gonna respond to this. And you start trying to like pre-plan your defense, you're, you're gonna be behind in time, right? That's you, a bad thing. It is bad, right? You, you, you lose the initiative, more importantly, you've lost this spirit that is the cornerstone of our style, right? But when I trick myself, I think, okay, well, he's going to be here, here, and I just, whoop, right? I've already, I've already decided that how I'm going to respond to his action is to cut him down, right? Once I'm in that mind space, it doesn't matter what he does. It doesn't matter if he does something completely off the wall. I can respond to it, right? Because my mind is already tasked there. And I said, thinking brain makes the decision and stops. It doesn't have to do anything after that. Everything else is subconscious. Everything else is way of the void, right? It's just, right? It's, it's, uh, it's not muscle memory. It's just, no, it's, it's, it's not muscle memory. Exactly. I mean, there's, of there's course there's muscle, muscle memory, memory in involved, it. but it, it's not what it is. What it is, is just this relegation. You, you move your mind from being the active micromanaging drone controller to the dude watching Star Wars, right? You're just sitting back. You're not doing any of that stuff. You're just, you're just watching it unfold. And so when he takes that swing, you're just watching it unfold as you go. You don't have to, you're, you're not a, you don't have to micromanage it. And because you don't have to micromanage it, you completely break apart the, the OODA loop, right? You don't have to observe and orient and decide and act or... Kind of like how you walk. You don't really think on walking? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You choose a destination. It's like, oh, I want to walk here. And your body starts going. What are you doing while your body's walking? You're thinking left, right, heel. So yeah, you are if you're doing sword work in the beginning, you're like, oh God, I don't even walk right. I don't breathe right. I got to fix everything. Or these Japanese people from the past are going to whip me, right? But once you're comfortable, right, you just walk. Yeah, so what's your, you want. yeah, what's your, what's your mind doing? Your mind's thinking on some stuff. It's looking around. It's going, oh, I'm observing this. I'm having an argument in my head with some person I should have said this and this to because, you know, got that anxiety over the past, oh, right? <laughs> I love it. 
So you want to free up your mind to observe because then you'll see what's going on, right? Then you'll see like, like, oh, right, okay. I can put myself where I want just because I observe, like, wow, that's close, right? Boom, I better take this here in case he does some squirrely stuff in this space, right? Or maybe I'll come in and work to, to down him, right? Or, or whatever, right? So let's go ahead and show this work with some knives. It's dirtier, I like it. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, uh, pretty simple, pretty easy, right? Now, up till now, all the sacrifices we've been doing have been implied sacrifices, right? I, I am implying the sacrifice to my arm. But, of course, uh, if need be, we can do this without implication, right? Right? So, he can't get to me without going through that arm. Right? Now, of course, if I've got work, I can use it to protect myself. Right? And, and sort of develop my position from there. But it's this idea, right, that even if, uh, even if I am forced to sacrifice this arm. This versus that, this is not gonna kill me, right? It's gonna suck. It's not gonna be fun. It's gonna suck a lot. Hope you like super glue. But, you know, four, five, six, seven cuts on my forearm versus perforation. In the vittles. Right? It's easy math. Easy, easy math. Of course, you know, you can still do that implication right? To where it's just like, oh yeah, he's totally going to hit me. They come to cut and he's doop, doop. doop. Right? You can adjust. And there's, there's just so many ways of doing this work. Uh, what's important is their perception, right? What they think they've got what they think that they have to interact with first, right? Bump, bump, bump. Right? It's, uh, it's, it's simple, so simple, right? If we work to open-handed work, it's the same way. If I'm out here and he's got to interact with my arms, right? then I can control at what distance he moves. Now, uh, as always, when you start working with uh, empty hands, things are happening a lot faster, right? Because things are closer, right? They are, <laughs> they're not as dangerous, right? Because that force is always spread as compared to the point of a knife or the edge of a sword or the weight of the sword even. Um, but it is faster. So it's, it's very useful to play with these techniques open-handed so you get accustomed to people moving quick, right? Because uh, bah, just people moving quick, uh, especially in, in the beginning of your studies, is enough to uh, disturb you psychologically. And you start going, oh, right? Oh, you start to have feelings about it, right? And you shouldn't, right? This is like, if he wants to move slow or fast, doesn't matter, right? It, it, it should not uh, disturb you, right? And if it does, one or the other, you, you need to work with your partner and be like, okay, I want you to just keep doing this until I feel nothing about it, right? Until you have so much exposure to it. It's just like, oh, you're going fast, right? It doesn't change my work. Oh, you're going slow. It doesn't change my work, right? When what they do completely contorts what you do, they're in the lead, <laughs> and that chaos is driving you where it wants, and that's not a good end for you, unless you're real lucky, they're unlucky, right? So, um, we can apply this to uh, sort of ambush attacks too, right? Because the same kind of thing's happening, right? 
he's doing work, uh, right? And I'm not sure what you're doing. You, you grabbing me? Yep. Okay, that's very non-lethal. I like that. Right? right? So, <laughs> here, you give me a hit or something. Okay. Right? I take that hit. I'm like, oh shit! I'm in the middle of a fight. And then I go, okay. Well, he had to position himself some way to be able to do this, right? Yeah, I'm taking that. I'm, oh fuck! Right? Boom! Boom! I respond to his position, right? To his relation. Because he's come at me, right? And he's got the strong position. His, his center line's into me, my center line, and all my tools are off in la la land. He hits me, boom, right? And I go, oh shit, right? I gotta clear, right? And I protect those kidneys from the other hand. And all of a sudden, boom, now our relation is completely reversed. I'm on the center line, he's in la la land, right? And you gain control of the position in this kind of way. So, uh, don't think of this kata just as some gotcha, like, like, oh, gotcha, right? <laughs> that, that's like, that's the lowest level of it. It's the most juvenile kind of like, right? Instead, you want to think, hmm, I need a quick way to resolve this. I can't have him dilly-dallying while his friends build up while the position develops poorly for me, right? Now, if I'm the one with friends coming, yeah, I'm gonna dilly-dally. I'm gonna keep this guy maybe, right? Because I wanna win. And if I've, got, sure if I've got friends, that's a very good thing in my corner, right? Um, I forget where I was going at. Just woo. Friends, dilly-dally. Yeah. It's gone. it's gone. So, when they're making their attack, right? Don't think it's just like, ooh, right? Uh -huh. Think about it as uh, forcing the development of the situation, right? Like, like, huh, 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 right? Oh, oh. Ooh, that's a bad tone. Right? You can make it germinate, right? So you're not stuck in this sort of like, And just punch. Kind of thing, right? Because again, if you're overwhelmed by the options that the opponent has, you just take them away, right? Right? Hey, you take them away. You, you adjust the work, right? I, I, I don't know how much sense this is making. <laughs> We're going well, on. We're well, rambling. But that's that. Um, to surmise or to summarize rather, uh, with this work, you have to be calm, you have to be focused, just like all of our other work, right? The only thing that's different here is I'm intentionally creating a target for him to work on, right? And I'm working from that position, right? Not because I assume he's gonna take that target, but because I assume he's going to take a target and I'm moving in relation to uh, improve my relative position to him, right? Once I've got that position improved, it works really easy. Real, real easy, comparatively, right? I think that that is about it. Do you have anything to add or? No. Okay, well then, this is the last of the Tachi Seho videos. Um, so we'll start with the uh, introduction to the Nito Seho, the two sword work. Oh, fun. oh yeah, in the next video. So uh, prepare for some left right brain confusion. Right? Oh, it's great. So, as always, if you want to understand this work, you have to pick up a sword and go train. <laughs>